today on the Orthodox Ethos podcast. I am an Orthodox Christian. Should I vote? And if I should, for who? In former times, if a pious Christian was involved in public life, he probably wasn't too well. They would have considered him crazy. Today, it is the opposite. If a pious person isn't concerned and pained by the way things are in the world, he is the one who has lost his mind. St. Paisios the Athenite. Today, you cannot stand indifferent to the public square. You cannot leave matters to the powers that be as if they are benevolent and working for our good. There are many national and international leaders who are clearly opposed to the faith and to the vision and to the ethos of the Orthodox Church, to the sanctity of life and man as made in God's image, to the integrity of the faith family and to the purity of the youth. Taking part in taking a stand today, witnessing to the truth in society as an expression and confession of our faith in Christ is an expression of love for our neighbor and for our Lord. St. Paisios the Athenite says elsewhere, too many Christians don't want to take on and remove an evil in society so as to maintain their peace and quiet, the status quo. This means that they have no love. But later we see these same people working hard for their own interests. That is why a certain spirit reigns today. With so-and-so, we need to have good relations, so he will say good things about us. With others, we need to have it good, so he doesn't drag us through the mud and so on. And others keep silent. They don't talk for fear They will write about them in the newspapers. And elsewhere, the great elder and saint of our day says, concerning voting, vote for the one you believe is the best, the one who loves God and our country. And people would always give the same reply. They're all the same, Father. So he added, well, look here. All olive trees are the same. All of them are affected by the same disease called dacos. However, some are affected 100% by it, others 80%, others 50%. Since we are in need of olive trees, we have to look for the ones that are affected the least. When we go to vote, we should always bear in mind two things. How much the candidate loves God and is thus a conscious member of the church? and how much he loves his country and looks solely after its interest and not his own. If someone uses another criterion to vote, he is acting out of self-interest and is not behaving like a true Christian. Later on, divine justice will allow him to pay for his mistake. So taking the criteria laid down by the great elder and saint and with some changes, applying it to the situation in America, which is different than Greece, where he was living and of which he was speaking, we can easily come to see, first of all, for whom we should, at least we can figure this out, for whom we should not vote. Orthodox Christians obviously cannot support corrupt politicians who lie and use their power to become rich, And, in addition to this, those who want the government to force Christian homeless shelters, adoption agencies, and other charities to endorse same-sex marriage, transgender identity, and experimental cross-sex drugs and surgeries. But there's much more today. Orthodox Christians cannot vote for those who aggressively promote abortion and support a law which has allowed for the murder 
of 60 million human beings since it was passed in 1973, so, or rather decided upon by the Supreme Court. Those who support abortion for any reason or no reason up to and, believe it or not, for some, even beyond the moment of birth. Or those who want the government to fund abortions, who will force Americans to pay for this grievous, grievous sin. Those who support physician-assisted suicide, we cannot support such a politician. Those who endorse same-sex marriage as on par with true marriage, undermining in this way Christian morality and furthering the de-Christianization of society. Furthermore, we cannot support and vote for those who advocate for the repeal of the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which promotes the religious conscience rights, or rather protects the religious conscience rights of health care workers who decline to assist with abortions and protects Christian adoption agencies which choose to place babies only with heterosexual couples. Those who are who support the repeal of this, we cannot support. Or those who support the Obamacare mandate requiring religious ministries to provide contraceptive and abortifacient drugs to their employees, despite that this would force them to trample upon their conscience as Orthodox Christians and their Christian faith. Those who are for implementing a nationwide lockdown if the science demands it, so they say, a lockdown which would, to be sure, once again mandate the closing of Orthodox churches. Or those who claim that the Orthodox Christian understanding of sexuality and gender is rank discrimination and thus walk in step with a radical pro-LGBT Orwellian Equality Act and they cannot be recipient of our support. Or those who sound positive and inclusive, that is, they say they want protections for people and want to fight discrimination, but by their actions they show that this rhetoric is deceptive. They're twisting the notion of discrimination in order to force Christians to violate their beliefs. And those who aim to force transgender ideology on the American people, the same people who want to sign legislation that will force Christian schools and ministries to hire people who oppose their religious convictions on sexuality and gender. The laws will also force these ministries, which hold that God created humans male and female, to open women's sports and women's restrooms to biological males, to refer to biological males by female pronouns if they identify as female, and to pay for transgender surgery in their healthcare plans. Yet again, we cannot vote for those who not only pledge to fight religious freedom at home, but they pledge to make America into a global force of enforcement of the extreme agenda of the neo-Marxists, which seeks to decimate the Christian vision of man and pressure Orthodox Christian countries into denying their faith and their anthropology, their whole vision of man. And those who are for cancel culture, even on the Supreme Court, and demonize those who oppose the extreme LGBT agenda, or those who brand conservative Christian nonprofits hate groups due to their beliefs on marriage and sexuality, listing them along with the Ku Klux Klan. Or those who single out those who adhere to traditional religious beliefs and moral convictions, aiming to limit their ability to live by their conscience and ostracizing them from polite society or those politicians who describe opponents of the radic radical LGBT agenda as the dregs of society. Yet again, we cannot vote for those who support and are supported by outspoken socialist and Marxist forces and would open the door to making America into a socialist society 
And those who are largely silent before the rioting and burning of buildings by Marxist anarchical mobs in many American cities. We cannot vote for any of these politicians. Consider the lessons of history. Whenever and wherever socialism has sought to gain a footing, it has led a charge against and persecuted terribly the Orthodox Christians and the Orthodox Church. We have a host of millions of martyrs in the 20th century, which testifies to the destruction which comes in the wake of socialists and Marxists coming to power. Socialism and Marxism inevitably leads to totalitarianism, where the government takes the place of God in the lives of its subservient citizens. Let us remember the years leading up to the Russian Revolution and the prophetic voices which called the nation, Russia and other countries, to repentance. It was 120 years ago that the great wonder worker, St. John of Kronstadt, among many others in the church at the time, stood prophetically calling the people of Russia to repentance and calling out the godless Marxist socialist leadership. Listen to what was said of St. John and how he stood not indifferent, but actively opposing the zeitgeist of his day. Being himself an image of meekness and humility, love for every person, irrespective of nationality or religion, St. John adopted an attitude, nonetheless, of great indignation towards those godless, materialistic, and liberal trends which subverted the faith of the Russian people and sabotaged Russia's thousand-year-old government. Subs Sequent events of the bloody Russian Revolution and the triumph of the godless and inhumane Bolshevism showed just how right was the great saint of the Russian land in his warnings and prophetic visions. St. John himself wrote and preached, quote, Russia, if you fall away from your faith, as many of the intellectual class have already fallen away, you will no longer be Russia or Holy Russia. And if there be no repentance in the Russian people, then the end of the world is near. God will take away the pious czar and will send a whip in the person of impious, cruel, self-appointed rulers who will inundate the whole earth with blood and tears. How prophetic were the words of the great wonder worker. He saw it all coming. But people would not listen. People did not repent sufficiently. Brothers and sisters, if we are not in pain for the state of the country and the world, we are in a spiritual coma. We are teetering on the edge of anarchy, or rather simply insanity. According to the words of St. Paisios, if a pious person isn't concerned and pained by the way things are in the world, he is the one who has lost his mind. We must ask God for more love, even as the spiritual, moral, and even political upheaval of American life is at the doors. It is the 11th hour we will all give an account before God if we are passive, if we are indifferent, if we are fearful of what the others will say. Unless we sincerely repent, unless we fall on our knees and we beg God for mercy, and as an expression of this repentance, we express our love for our country by going to at least cast a vote for a candidate who at least respects God and Christians and shows love for his country, or at least for one who is, according to St. Paisios, affected the least by the disease of the day, 
by the zeitgeist of the age, by the spirit of the world, which is the spirit of Antichrist. May God have mercy on America and bless her to keep socialism at bay and continue to be a safe and peaceful place for Orthodox Christians to work out their salvation. Oh, my God.